Day 23 How We Grow God wants us to grow up like Christ in everything. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15a The Message We are not meant to remain as children. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14a New Testament in Modern English by J.B. Phillips God wants you to grow up. Your Heavenly Father's goal for you is to mature and to develop the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Sadly, millions of Christians grow older but never grow up. They are stuck in perpetual spiritual infancy, remaining in diapers and booties. The reason is that they never intended to grow. Spiritual growth is not automatic. It takes an intentional commitment. You must want to grow, decide to grow, make an effort to grow, and persist in growing. Discipleship, the process of becoming like Christ, always begins with a decision. Jesus calls us, and we respond. Come be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. When the first disciples chose to follow Jesus, they didn't understand all the implications of their decision. They simply responded to Jesus' invitation. That's all you need to get started. Decide to become a disciple. Nothing shapes your life more than the commitments you choose to make. Your commitments can develop you or they can destroy you, but either way, they will define you. Tell me what you're committed to and I'll tell you what you will be in 20 years, because we become whatever we are committed to. It is at this point of commitment that most people miss God's purpose for their lives. Many are afraid to commit to anything and they just drift through life. Others make half-hearted commitments to competing values, which leads to frustration and mediocrity. Others make a full commitment to worldly goals, such as becoming wealthy or famous, and end up disappointed and bitter. Every choice has eternal consequences, so you'd better choose wisely. Peter warns, since everything around us is going to melt away, what holy, godly lives you should be living. God's part and your part in helping you grow. Christ-likeness is the result of making Christ-like choices and depending on His Spirit to help you fulfill those choices. Once you decide to get serious about becoming like Christ, you must begin to act in new ways. You will need to let go of some old routines, develop some new habits, and intentionally change the way you think. You can be certain that the Holy Spirit will help you with these changes. The Bible says, "...continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling." For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. This verse shows the two parts of spiritual growth, work out and work in. The work out is your responsibility and the work in is God's role. Spiritual growth is a collaborative effort between you and the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit works with us, not just in us. This verse which is written to believers, is not about how to be saved, but how to grow. It does not say work for your salvation, because you can't add anything to what Jesus has already done. But during a physical workout, you exercise to develop your body, not to get a body. When you work out a puzzle, you already have all the pieces. Your task is to put them together. Farmers work the land, not to get land, but to develop what they've already got. God has given you a new life. Now you are responsible to develop it with fear and trembling. That means take your spiritual growth seriously. When people are casual about their spiritual growth, it shows they don't understand the eternal implications of it, as we saw earlier. Changing your autopilot. To change your life, you must change the way you think. Behind everything you do is a thought. Every behavior is motivated by a belief and every action is prompted by an attitude. God revealed this thousands of years before psychologists understood it. He said, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Imagine riding in a speedboat on a lake with an automatic pilot set to go east. If you decide to reverse and head west, you have two possible ways to change the boat's direction. One way is to grab the steering wheel and physically force it to head in the opposite direction from where the autopilot is programmed to go. By sheer willpower, you could overcome the autopilot, but you would feel constant resistance. 
Your arms would eventually tire the stress, you'd let go of the steering wheel, and the boat would instantly head back east the way it was internally programmed. This is what happens to you when you try to change your life with willpower. You say, I'll force myself to eat less, to exercise more, to quit being disorganized and late. Yes, willpower can produce short-term change, but it also creates constant internal stress because you haven't dealt with the root cause. The change doesn't feel natural, so eventually you give up, you go off your diet, and you quit exercising. You quickly revert to your old patterns. There's a better and easier way. Change your autopilot. Change the way you think. The Bible says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Your first step in spiritual growth is to start changing the way you think. Change always starts first in your mind. The way you think determines the way you feel, and the way you feel influences the way you act. Paul said, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. To be like Christ, you must develop the mind of Christ. And the New Testament calls this mental shift repentance, which literally in Greek means to change your mind. You repent whenever you change the way you think by adopting how God thinks about yourself, about sin, about God, about other people, about life, your future, and everything else. You take on Christ's outlook and perspective. We are commanded to think the same way that Jesus Christ thought. And there are two parts to doing this. The first half of this mental shift is to stop thinking immature thoughts, which are self-centered and self-seeking. The Bible says, stop thinking like children. In regards to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adult. Babies by nature are completely selfish. They think only of themselves and their own needs. They are incapable of giving. They can only receive. That is immature thinking. Unfortunately, many people never grow beyond that kind of thinking. The Bible says selfish thinking is the source of sinful behavior. Those who live following their sinful selves think only about the things that their sinful selves want. The second half of thinking like Jesus is to start thinking maturely, which focuses on others, not yourself. In his great chapter on what real love is, Paul concluded that thinking of others is the mark of maturity. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Today, many assume that spiritual maturity is measured by the amount of biblical information and doctrine you know. Now, while knowledge is one measure of maturity, it isn't the whole story. The Christian life is far more than creeds and convictions. It also includes conduct and character. Our deeds must be consistent with our creeds, and our beliefs must be backed up with Christ-like behavior. Christianity is not a religion or a philosophy, but a relationship and a lifestyle. The core of that lifestyle is thinking of others, just as Jesus did instead of ourselves. The Bible says we should think of their good and try to help them by doing what pleases them. Even Christ did not try to please himself. Thinking of others is the heart of Christ's likeness and is the best evidence of spiritual growth. This kind of thinking is unnatural, countercultural, rare, and difficult. Fortunately, we have help. The Bible says God has given us his spirit, and that's why we don't think the same way that the people of this world think. In the next few days, we're going to look at the tools the Holy Spirit uses to help you grow. Thinking about my purpose on day 23, a point to ponder, it is never too late to start growing. A verse to remember. Let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to Him and is perfect. Romans chapter 12, verse 2b, today's English version. A question to consider. What is one area where I need to stop thinking my way and start thinking God's way?